Uh, it's a pleasure to come here and talk about our experiences with the uh, Quant Studio 3D digital PCR platform. Uh, this is a technology that's been available for a while, uh, and it's essentially a limiting dilution assay, which has been done for many, many years. Uh, but now these instruments are becoming more accessible uh, to core facilities and individual laboratories because the costs for the instruments are dropping uh, prior to the last two that have been, re been released, the instrumentation that you had to do this on was relatively expensive, but these are quite affordable. Uh, the Quant Studio is a quite, a, quite affordable and a low risk investment for the lab. That's one reason we brought it in uh, initially. But this is just an image of the surface of the chip itself, which sets up uh, up to 20,000 individual reactions from a single master mix. Uh, and this is the type of data that you produce. Deb was talking about the top panel here where she's doing absolute quantitation where you can get a count of the number of molecules in your, in your volume and you can actually then just calculate back to what your original volume was. But you can also do relative quantitation or quantification and I'll argue that you should always try to do this. It's a fabulous way to do it because then you don't really have to worry about the DNA concentration going in as long as you're within the range of the instrument. And I'll show you some data on those or on that. Uh, but these are the type of images that the software produces. Uh, and uh, you can manually edit these, uh, especially the dot plots. And I think, yeah, on the, on the top panel, you can see there's a bar there. You can drag that left and right if you want to change the threshold to, for the software to do the different calculations. Uh, if you don't like the threshold that uh, the software automatically puts in, uh, although I will say it, uh, we typically don't fiddle with this, except I'll show one case at the end where we did. Um, the, the numbers from the instrument, the software, are almost always spot on anyway. Uh, I won't talk about limiting dilution assays. Uh, I won't go through this slide. Basically, I'll say that the software does this for you. It does the Poisson calculation to correct for the numbers of doubles, triples, because we're looking at individual wells in this 20,000 reaction chip, and some of them are doubles and triples. The software does that calculation for you. Actually, you can do it very simply. Deb talked about how the PCR reactions are set up. This is a new image of one of these chips. I don't know if you can see that, but basically it's about 20,000 wells, and a lot of them are negative, the blank ones, and a lot of them are positive. And we're working here at about a 10% negative rate. Just briefly, because I want to get to the next generation sequencing uh, quanti quantifications, this instrument is terrific for copy number variation. We've been doing some copy number variation uh, st studies up in uh, Ithaca. And we've, this is actually a small part of a 17 panel, panel DNA set uh, looking at a single copy gene, or ended up being a single copy gene, but uh, all of them, we're looking at, this is the relative quantitation, so we're expressing uh, TACMAN assay for FAM versus the TACMAN assay for VIC, which is, FAM is uh, on the y-axis, VIC is on the x-axis, and we just look at the ratios. We don't really care about the number of spots on that chip. It's really the ratios of the two, those two different reporters, and out of 17, this is only six of them I'm showing, but out of 17, they looked almost identical. The variation among the 17 was about 6%, all these ratios. So it's really terrific for that. I'll skip that. Uh, what I want to get to, because it's really what I'm here for, is talking about our uh, experiences with quantifying next generation sequencing libraries. And so, uh, just briefly, this is the problem that we're trying to address. Um, those of you who have Illumina instruments, you know this problem. Uh, it's the clustering issue. Uh, so the upper left is an image of what happens on the surface of the flow cell. We generate uh, millions of clusters derived from an, an original DNA fragment. Uh, but we don't want those clusters to be too dense, uh, which is shown in the middle. This is overclustered. So uh, the, the bars here are basically cluster densities. Uh, the two outside ones are good. Uh, the blue bars are total clusters. The green bars are past filter clusters. And the middle channel here is over clustered. So the clusters are too high. This is just 
thousands per millimeter squared. Uh, the cluster density is too high, they're packed too closely together, and the quality of data just drops off, and the pass filter rate is, uh, is low. So you want to avoid this. The other thing you want to avoid is being underclustered. So uh, this is an example of an underclustered lane on a flow cell. Uh, this is what we're shooting for somewhere in this, this area. Uh, and this, can't read it, lane two, is uh, underclustered. Here, the sequence quality doesn't suffer. Uh, it's actually a very good quality sequence, but you get, just get a fraction of what you're expecting. And, and so in the lab, we tend to rerun these. So it costs one to $2,000, uh, that's what we charge, to run these lanes. We would rerun these uh, over and under clustered lanes, uh, essentially at my, my expense. <coughs> Uh, so typically we do this, or a lot of people do this this way uh, for standard libraries is we quantify with uh, the life tech qubit and get an average molecular weight based on a, an electropharogram. For us, it's the fragment analyzer. And we adjust everything to a two nanomolar stock. And this is fine for most standard libraries. And you can use qPCR, uh, but uh, digital PCR has some distinct advantages. First is more accuracy. Uh, QPCR, a lot of people use this, but uh, in most people's hands, the, uh, it's generally a two-fold uh, accuracy for the quantitation. Uh, it's a CT value, so you're looking at about two-fold differences be between calling what that concentration is. Digital PCR is down around 10 to 20% accuracy. And the nice thing is that digital doesn't require a standard curve. So with uh, LifeTech's help, uh, or ABI's help, uh, we've designed uh, three TACMAN assays, one for each of the major type of Illumina sequencing library, the TrueSeq DNA and RNA on the top, next hair in the middle, and the bottom is the TrueSeq small RNA. They differ in a few of the sequences, so we had to design three different assays. Uh, they all three work, these are examples of what they look like in the, uh, essentially the absolute quantitation mode on the left-hand side. Uh, so we see a big negative peak and positive peak. And the uh, TrueSeq was labeled with FAM. The other two were labeled with VIC. It's a long story, I won't go into it. Uh, but basically they all three work. We spent a lot of, lot of time retrospectively checking our libraries, just convincing, convincing ourselves that this would work. And sure enough, it, uh, the quantifications with the digital correlate extremely well with our results off the, the sequencers. These are three examples. Uh, the left-hand panel, all five of these lanes are fine, uh, but some are a little bit lower than the others. And sure enough, the digital results shown on the bottom correlate extremely well with what those cluster densities were on the flow cell. The red bars on all these graphs are what we thought that library was. Uh, the middle, middle panel shows an under, under clustered sequencing lane, and sure enough, testing with digital PCR after the run, uh, that, that sample is uh, quite a bit lower than we uh, thought it was. We thought it was up at two nanomolar up there. Uh, and here's an example of one that was overclustered, and sure enough, that uh, was above this red line, so it was quantified on the digital PCR as higher than what we thought it would be. And in fact, we've, you can do this, uh, as many of you know, we're doing a lot of pooling of samples. Uh, this is a similar result retrospectively. Uh, this, this is a pool of eight samples that were combined into a single lane. Uh, after the sequencing run, we separated them out into the ind individual samples, and this was the dis distribution we got across these eight samples. Uh, rough, uh, about two-fold, highest to lowest, and that's not uncommon. Uh, so then we tested those libraries, the pre-pooling libraries, and uh, sure enough, those levels correlate reasonably well with the end result. Uh, there's a lot of pipetting that goes on between these two steps, so that probably gives rise to that variation. And then uh, the last thing I think I'll talk about is uh, the question always comes up about insert sizes because this is uh, <clears throat> uh, one of the things we try to do often with 
uh, the Illumina sequencing libraries is create libraries of different insert sizes. And since we're setting up these PCR reactions, you know, how does, how does it work on different insert size libraries? And these are new data. Uh, and so we recently made three libraries out of the same original DNA uh, sample. Uh, small, smallest insert library was, our total size was 250 to 350. Uh, and these are total size of the libraries. Uh, a middle size, 550 to 650, as you can see on the electropharogram. And the largest was 750 to 900. Uh, we did the sequencing uh, and uh, this is the uh, cluster densities. So the smallest library, the middle library, the high, uh, largest library. And the, I apologize, I had to get these on the same scale, but these are approximately on the same scale for uh, the millimeters or uh, clusters per millimeter squared. And sure enough, testing uh, with digital PCR uh, mimicked this uh, output, cluster density, although uh, the, the two smaller ones worked just fine in the software. It uh, spit out the right numbers and it, the two bars, two blue bars on the left are just straight out of the software, basically. Uh, the software did totally fail this third one, uh, but if you go in and if you do some manual editing, change that threshold around, you can get this, this number back. This has to do with the separation between these two populations. Uh, when we have these smaller insert libraries, these two populations are separated fairly well. In that largest insert library, these, these weren't separated as well, and you could actually see it on the uh, the histogram, but the software couldn't draw that threshold, and so we could just manually stick it in there, and it worked just fine. Uh, so it seems to work fine uh, across a broad range of insert sizes, and then what we're doing now is using this more and more prospectively. So I've got three minutes. Uh, These are two examples of uh, libraries that we tested before the sequencing run. <coughs> And I'm trying to think if these are both ne Nextera libraries. I know the left-hand one is. I'm not quite sure about the right-hand one. I think it is also. Uh, so this library uh, we thought was up here at two, two nanomolar, the red, red horizontal bars. Both of these libraries were, we thought were two nanomolar. Uh, this one on digital tested as 0.53. Uh, so we ran it at 24 picomolars onto the, in the sequencer instead of our normal eight. And we got uh, relatively normal read numbers off the MySeq, so about 15 million reads. Uh, similarly, this, is, uh, this was a library that turned out being low. We ran it uh, 13 picomolar instead of eight picomolar and got right around the target. This is a rapid run mode, so right around 130 million uh, uh, total clusters. So that's right where we want to be. I won't, oh, there's, that's what I should have used. Um, but, uh, so the last thing, one last thing, we're gonna be out of here in one minute? Yeah. Okay, uh, so what we've developed uh, to help with this quantification, I guess I shouldn't have skipped it, uh, is the dilution factor. So when we test these libraries, we have to get into the range of uh, what the digital PCR reads and I won't go through this in detail, but essentially this bottom number is what you can concentrate on. Our samples that we make, the two nanomolar stocks that we make, we have to dilute about 200,000 fold to get into the range of digital PCR. And we actually used to go a million fold and now we've cut it back, uh, but it's a fair dilution. So uh, I don't trust that dilution all that well, although it you actually can calculate back to your original. And so we've developed an internal reference standard. So this shows uh, recent results from that internal reference standard. Basically, that reference is a uh, synthetic fragment of the human RNase-P locus, which you can buy their ass, uh, the assay off the shelf from uh, ABI LifeTech. Uh, you can get it in both the VIC and the FAM version, which is nice, which is why I chose this one. Uh, and we can add that to our sample before we do our dilution. And we, so we can do this one to 200,000 
full dilution without really caring too, too much how accurate it is. And so when we get our results in the form of this dot plot and we just take the numbers from the software, we just calculate a ratio of the FAM to the VIC, in this case, or this example, that ratio, it's basically the, the blues plus the greens expressed relative to the uh, greens plus the reds, FAM to VIC. This ratio is 3.8. I know our internal reference now is about 0.6 nanomolar. Takes a while to figure that out. Uh, but you just do the simple math, and so that library is 2.3 nanomolar. Uh, and then we can go into the sequencing based on that. Uh, just two words in summary. We've de developed these assays. Uh, we've de developed an internal reference. Uh, retrospectively, it works great. We're doing it pro prospectively now. And the only last point, which is, are some of the slides have skipped, is that we're still developing these assays. So uh, just in the last week, we've redesigned the TrueSeq, or I didn't do it, maybe I life Tech did, redesigned the uh, TrueSeq DNA and RNA library and improved that separation between the two populations. So it's improving. So we're still working on protocols. And then acknowledgments, uh, my group at, uh, in Ithaca, the Genomics Corps, uh, and I've had a lot of help from ABI Life Tech Thermo Fisher now. So thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions.